church. How many of you were glad to see the ground? I don't know. I know Sherry and I, we were driving. This might be just a little bit louder. I know Sherry and I, we were driving in on uh, War Memorial coming from Washington. And as we got around Emo's where the uh, ice cream shop is, uh, I told Sherry, I go, wow, look how wide everything. If anybody else notice how wide everything looks, because all the snow is just not piled up like four feet high right along the road. I mean, it just looks so wide open. So let me ask you, um, what what did you do, or what did your family do, the two days that you were not able to get outside? What what did what did you do? Anybody? What did y'all do? Went nuts. <laughs> do what? Oh, clean house? Did wow, the snow and stuff, Mark? Yeah. Red? Plowed snow. Plowed snow, yeah. Although we we're really supposed to be out doing that. We're not supposed to be outside breathing this stuff. Slept? Yeah, what did you do? Cooked. And then who ate? All of it? There you go. I did a lot of that too, didn't I, Sherry? We did a lot of cooking. Sherry and I, we, we did a couple of different things. Uh, we kind of played a lot of Scrabble, kind of kept the brain from freezing up, so we played Scrabble, I don't know, uh, several several times and stuff. Nothing, um, I, uh, one day, uh, of course, being a preacher, you know that I studied and was in prayer 16 hours a day, right? No, I'm, I'm a normal person just like you. So one day, after doing some reading and studying and stuff, I started binging on The Long Ranger. Uh, I love The Long Ranger. And I guess I watched about five episodes, I mean, straight in a row one day. Another day, the, uh, uh, for some reason or other, this last Christmas, I didn't watch very few, if hardly any, Hallmark Christmas movies. I don't know what was wrong with this year, but that usually kind of gets me into the Christmas spirit and Christmas mood and all that kind of stuff. But this year I watched very few Hallmark movies, and one day uh, during all of this vortex and different things, I turned on Hallmark, and I guess I watched about four or five Hallmark movies all in a row. A lot of them I'd never seen before, and I was like, well, you know, one of the things I like about The Lone Ranger and Hallmark movies, you always know how it's going to turn out. It's going to turn out good. But what makes it interesting is trying to figure out how is it going to turn out good. And then what kind of twist is it going to have to have? Because for anything good to happen in the Hallmark movies or Lone Ranger, there's some things that have got to come to an ending. Uh, certain things have got to end so that good things can happen. And I know in the Hallmark movies, it's always like, you know what, this relationship, it needs to end so that you can have a better relationship. Or, or you're going to have to move cities. You're going to have to end your residency in this particular city and move to this city. Or you're going to have to end this job and you're going to have to move to this job so that things will go better. It's all about that. I, I think it was uh, Terry that mentioned, can you believe the first month of the brand new year that began, what, three days ago? We're already a month. It's gone. January's gone. And, and it does. It seems like it was like three days ago, four days ago, maybe a week ago, that we were just celebrating the brand new year already. One twelfth of the brand new year is history. How many of us made uh, resolutions for the new year? How many of us are still keeping those resolutions that we made for the new year? Good. Got one. So I've oh, got two. Saw a few more hands go up about the resolutions. I mean, you're keeping them now. I've only seen two two hands that kept them up. You know, and, and those resolutions is all about new beginnings. And anytime you have a new beginning, there's things that have to come to an end. I read this statement. Don't know where it came from. Uh, I wrote it down several weeks ago, and it went like this. It said, today may be the enemy of your tomorrow. The tomorrow that you desire and envision may never come to pass if you do not end some things that you are doing today. 
Let me read that again. Today may be the enemy of your tomorrow. The tomorrow that you desire and envision may never come to pass if you do not end some things that you are doing today. In order for us to move forward, there are some things that we need to end today. If you have your Bibles, open up to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, look at verse 17. The Apostle Paul writes these words to, to, to the believers at Corinth, but also for us as well. He says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Something I always do, especially when I see the word anyone, all, or everyone, I always have those circled in my Bible. So what does anyone mean? What does anyone mean? It means everyone. And he says anyone, everyone, all of us who belong to Christ. If any of us belong to Christ, and I would say that the majority of us sitting in this room today, we would say, oh yeah, I belong to Jesus. I belong to Christ. He says that we have become a new person. We are a new person. If you and I belong to Christ, we are a new person. He has made us new. He has not rehabbed us. Like with some of the television shows where they're rehabbing some of these old houses and everything. He doesn't rehab us. He doesn't take the old shell of us and put in a few new things. He tells us for those of us that belong to Him, for those of us that belong to Christ, we are brand new. Inside out, we are brand new. <coughs> He doesn't mix in his newness with some of our oldness. The old is gone. The old is ended. But how many of us, and this is a question that I dealt with for the last week in my own life. And as I've looked at my life uh, through Ever how many years has been since I gave my life to Jesus? To be honest with you, I took Christ. And I wanted to mix him and what he had to offer me in with the stuff that I wanted to hold on to in my life that wasn't good. <clears throat> oh yeah, there were some things to get rid of. Oh, I can get rid of this. I can get rid of that. I'll get rid of that. It's kind of like decluttering. Who's that lady that does the decluttering thing now? That's all, that's all the rage? I think she's a boy in the I believe. Yeah, an older lady and stuff like that. And I, I was doing some reading on that. And, and, and what I think she, her, her method is, is that you begin to, you're going to look it up. What's it? Condo? Yep, that's her. And, uh, and, and so what she says is, what you do is you, you, you pick something up and you look at it. If it doesn't give you joy, then you pinch it. Get rid of it. If, it. if it gives you joy, oh, then you need to hold on to that. And I'm thinking, we would never get rid of anything. <laughs> you, know, you know, how you know, you know what you got until you go down and you start digging? And if you get through one box after four days and you're like, wow, I don't want to get rid of anything. Uh, well, you know, I think we do that a lot spiritually. When he says, anyone who belongs to Christ, you are new. He has made us new. The old is gone. Is it difficult to get rid of the old? 
Absolutely, just like what we were talking about. It's very difficult. Let me ask you, how many of you know what these are? But, oh my, pajama, I'm glad I didn't wear these to preach in this morning. I thought about it, I tell you. No, but yeah, they're, well, what they really are, they are jogger slash sleep pants, okay? <laughs> you can actually wear them out. I would like to tell you that these are really old. They are, well, they are kind of, they're one week and one day old. Sherry, this is one of the birthday gifts that she got me last Saturday, a week ago yesterday, on my birthday. And just as soon as I put these things on, I never wanted to take them off. <laughs> they are comfortable. Very comfortable. I mean, yeah, and don't you have something like that? Maybe it's the well-worn uh, sweatpants or maybe a wear, uh, well-worn pair of blue jeans that you like to put on or, or maybe it's a pair of tennis shoes or slippers or something like that that, man, as soon as you get home from work, first thing you want to do is, is get out of whatever it is you have on and, man, you want to get into some well-worn sweatpants or some new sweatpants that look and feel well-worn. They're comfortable. One of the things I like about being camouflaged, she, uh, she for Christmas, I don't know why she was in all this camouflage stuff, but she got Santa Claus to bring me a camouflaged hoodie. So now I can veg out on the couch in these and my camouflaged hoodie, and she doesn't ever see me. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah. I have friends that are now believers in Jesus Christ. When things go bad, or they have a bad day, they go back to their comfort zone. The old stuff that felt good. I've had friends that are alcoholics. Put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Got rid of the alcohol. Realized that they couldn't be around it. But still, even today, 20, 25 years later, when something bad happens, they didn't really get rid of it because they go back to it. They gotta go get that bottle of wine or they gotta go uh, get something else, the vodka or whatever, they go back to it. Because that's where they find their comfort. But you see, he's told us, that those of us that belong to Christ, we're new. The old is gone, and the question is, is it really gone? I've had brothers and sisters in Christ that have come out of toxic, very poisonous relationships. And they realized that that particular relationship was hindering their relationship with Christ. And so it became, you know, do I want this person or do I want Jesus in my life? And they chose Jesus. But just as soon as some difficulty begins to arise, guess what happens? And it's happened over and over and over again. That person goes back to that very toxic, poisonous relationship. Because again, it's comfortable. It's hard. And it's painful to end certain things in our life. But what you and I need to realize as believers of Christ, those of us that belong to Jesus, until we take the old 
that has plagued us, that has tackled us, that has destroyed the abundance that Christ wants to give us in our lives will always be weighing down. There's a scripture that I shared several, I mean, back in the summer, I think it was, in, in Hebrews chapter 12, and if you want to flip over to Hebrews chapter 12 for just a moment, I'm going to be honest with you. There, there's times I hate, sometimes I hesitate that a scripture that I've used, oh, I don't know, maybe three or four months ago, maybe five or six months ago. Sometimes I really hesitate to, to bring those scriptures out again. But I recognize that sometimes whenever I use those scriptures on a particular Sunday, all of us don't get it. <laughs> uh, Sherry and I, we were driving the other day, and, and there was a scripture that, that came up, and, and we were talking about it. And she goes, wow, I've never seen that before. I've never heard that before. And I just looked at her, and I went, uh, duh. I, I've preached on that thing probably at least a half a dozen times over the last ten years. And uh, I realized, though, that any given Sunday, even today, there are some of you that are struggling. And I understand that. And so it's sometimes kind of hard for us to, to grasp everything that is being said. And maybe that's one of the good things about having this recorded and it's on the uh, it's on our website. It's actually you can actually see us, which is kind of scary. <laughs> and hear it. But then we go back again. Yeah, you know what, Mark? We can see the back of your head all the time. And, and so for you guys sitting here, please don't nod off or fall out. It's a sweep, okay? But it's hard. I know I had I had a I had a child one time. I can remember Heather whenever she was very young. I got up to preach one Sunday, and just as I was getting up to preach, I was holding her and she barfed on me. <laughs> so I just got up and preached like that. I mean, but that happens if you got children, and sometimes our children get restless and different things like that. And so it's hard as a mom or a dad sometimes to be able to focus in on everything that's being said. So when you look at Hebrews chapter 12, a few weeks ago, or a few months ago, I looked at this scripture. And I shared something that I discovered for the very first time after, my goodness, I'm 64 years old that I've never seen before. And he says in verse 1, he says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith. Well, who is these witnesses that the Hebrew writer is telling us about? Well, he's telling us about the ones that are in chapter 11. When he says, by faith. And so many times I look at our lives and if we were to talk amongst each other, how many times would we say to one another, man, Jim, you know what? I'd love to have the faith of Abraham. Or Cindy, I'd love to have the faith of, of, of an Esther. Or a Ruth. Or a Moses. And see, so he goes down and he talks about these people's faith. People who face all sorts of difficulties. People who face death. How about Daniel? Man, I love to have the faith of Daniel. That even when I'm thrown in a den of lions, my faith stays strong. Well, look what he says. He says, therefore then, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the light of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. There are certain things we need to end. What is it that's hindering you in your race that God has put you in? The lane that He has put you in? 
See, he says you strip off every weight, especially the sin. In other words, there's some things that you and I that we're carrying in our life right now that when we gave our life to Jesus, we didn't let go of it. I held on to it. Because again, it's my comfort. And when things come up, instead of going to Christ, I go back to what I get comfortable with. And it may not be sinful. But it hinders my running. And he says, strip it off. Get rid of it. Whatever it may be. If we're serious... Because he tells us, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. If I'm serious about running that race, I'm going to end it. I'm going to end those things that are hindering me, and especially those things that are sinful. I want to uh, close out and thank you, Sam Fritz. Boy, oh, Sam, you always do just an awesome job. Uh, with the scripture that he read in Galatians chapter 5. In Galatians chapter 5, as Sam was reading in verse 16 and following, he tells us that we need to let the Holy Spirit guide our lives. And he tells us that if we let the Holy Spirit guide our life, if you let the Holy Spirit guide your life, he says you will not gratify the desires of your sinful nature. I will not be doing what my sinful nature craves. If I let the Holy Spirit guide me. He didn't say, if I let the Holy Spirit guide me, that I might not cave to my sinful desires. He said, you will not. And when he talks about the Holy Spirit guiding us, uh, a couple of days ago when I was reading this, I started thinking about the Israelites whenever they came out of Egypt. And as they were going toward the Promised Land, you remember uh, God had not left them alone. You remember how God showed them where they needed to go and where they needed to be? He, he, he was a, a, a cloud of uh, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire at night. And every time that cloud moved or that fire moved, they were supposed to move. They always knew exactly where they were supposed to go. They knew exactly the lane that they were supposed to be in, the path that they were supposed to follow, always, because God was always guiding them. And the Holy Spirit does the same thing for you and me today, church. He guides us. He is always with us. And He says that these two forces, they're constantly fighting each other. And he says in verse 19 that when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. We know if we're following our sinful nature. There's sexual immorality. And just think about that word, sexual immorality. That covers a gamut of stuff. There's impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility. There's quarreling. There's jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Further, ask today, how many of us want to go to heaven? Oh, every hand would go up. Yeah, I want to go to heaven. I want to be in the kingdom of God. How many of us sitting in this room do some of these things describe you? Or maybe describe me? Have you ever been in any of these things? 
I have. Matter of fact, I can go through a whole bunch of them and put a check mark by. And can I tell you something? I hated myself. And I hated life. Oh yeah, I thought I was having fun. And I put on the show that I was having fun when I was around people that we were doing all these kind of things with. But to be honest with you, when I got by myself, I hated myself because life. Life was hell. Because I was away from God. It says in verse 22, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If I was tech savvy at all, I'd have me a, uh, have me a slide up here and have both of those two things listed on each side and ask you, which one would you like to be in your life? Which, which one would you like to describe your life? You know, do you want one that's always a bunch of fussing and arguing and uh, uh, divisiveness and, and, and people, uh, a selfish ambition and envy? I mean, or would you like to have joy, love, peace? Well, he tells us something significant in verse 24. Those who belong to Christ Jesus, there is those words again. And I've got that circle. Belong to Christ Jesus. Have nailed the passion and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. What do I want in my life today? As a person that belongs to Christ. Am I worn out? Kind of goes back to the Bible lesson this morning. Man, we're seeing some good stuff in our adult Bible class in that video series with Kyle Eidelman, I believe. Not a fan. Today, uh, lesson was 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 it was incredible because it, it it was all like that because you know what we, we don't want that kind of life. I don't want my sinful nature to, to control me. I don't want to be a person that's that's always full of of, of lustful pleasures, of hostility, or quarreling, or outburst of anger, or, or always thinking about myself. I don't want that. But there's only one way out. And that's to nail it to the cross of Christ. To crucify it. To slay it. By giving it to Jesus. Realizing that for me to move forward, I need to end some stuff in my life. The old. So that I can have the new. Let us pray. Father, I just pray that you'll be with us as, as those of us who belong to you, Lord. Father, I just pray that the things we've talked about this morning and the scriptures we've looked at, maybe it has kind of rattled our, our brains just a little bit to take a look at our lives because I know for so many years in my life, there's so much of the old me that I wanted to hold on to because I just didn't trust you, Lord. I trusted, I had more faith in my fear than I did in you. And actually I found comfort in my fear because I knew what it felt like. So, Father, I pray that you'll be with each one of us in this room today. 
And Lord, that whatever it is that is holding us back from living the life that you have given us, that no matter what comes down the pike, no matter what kind of obstacles come toward us and, and kind of blocks our lane of this race that you have put us on to run, this course, Father, that we will end these things and put our faith and our trust completely in you, knowing that no matter what happens in this life, that your ultimate goal is to make us like your son Jesus, so that no matter what does happen, that we can be with you forever. Father, help us to trust you. And I pray for us today, Lord, that we can have new beginnings today. And those beginnings must begin by ending some stuff. Bless us in this world. And it's in your Son's holy name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing a song. Tell it to Jesus all along. And if you need to do that today, I just pray that you'll come. Let us pray with you. Let us pray for you. Even after this assembly today, if, if there's some things on your heart, maybe some things that we've talked about this morning that, that you would like some clarification on, uh, don't hesitate to, to grab me or grab one of the, the shepherds and let us pray with you. Let us uh, visit with you and talk with you. Uh, because it's not easy. Again, I tell you what, seriously, uh, if I could have gotten away with it, I probably would have worn these comfortable sweatpants today. And that's the way we are with so many things in our life that we know is hindering us in our race with Jesus. So please, let, let us minister together. Let us minister with one another. You know, you have to come to me just with the person sitting beside you in the queue when everything is said and done. Just say, hey, you know what? Uh, you got a second. Would you listen? Would you pray with me? Would you pray for me?